Before we go ahead and jump into the tutorial, I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to this video's sponsor. Big shout out to The Coldest Water. Uh, these guys have made an amazing branded Coldest Water water bottle. It is amazing. For those of you guys that don't know, I live in Tucson, Arizona. It gets extremely hot in the past month. It's been starting to get up in there into the high 90s. I work on the outside a lot. I work um, in hot conditions and stuff like that. And this water bottle has kept my water cold the whole time. I've woken up with ice still in my water bottle after filling it the day before. It is phenomenal. I don't know what they do, whatever, but this thing works so good. And I wouldn't advertise a product if I wasn't actually fully confident in it. I'm actually, this water bottle was sent to me for free uh, by them, which is really cool. They even went ahead and engraved it with my uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, but I'm actually probably going to end up picking up an even bigger one because I just love this product so much. Um, definitely recommend checking it out, guys. It's starting to get in the summer. A lot of you guys might be looking for water bottles, going back to school. You know, nobody likes water that's hot. Everybody likes their water cool. And the coldest water bottle does just that. It keeps your water cold uh, for long periods of time. And the best thing about it is that it has a year-long uh, warranty where if you buy it, you don't like it, you can return it within a year and get your money back. But this thing is built to last. It's strong, durable. I've dropped it a couple times, and this thing has no sh sh no signs of being torn up. Uh, compared to Hydro Flask and all those other uh, Yetis and stuff like that, this thing blows them out of the water in ins its installation capabilities and also its uh, durability, which my Hydro Flask I had before was dropped a couple times and had multiple dents and stuff like that and this thing has held up just fine definitely recommend checking them out their product links are going to be down in the description they do a weekly giveaway that you can enter so you can try to get one of these bottles for free um and as well as if you do want to support the channel and you are interested in picking yourself up a coldest water you can go ahead and use my affiliate link and use uh code gar10 for 10 percent off your order so definitely recommend checking out it supports the channel and you guys get a really cool water bottle and one that's going to last you a very long time so definitely re recommend checking them out. Again, a big thanks to Coldest Water for making this video, uh, or sponsoring this video. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare 204 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Combat Vehicle 90. The Combat Vehicle 90, known as simply CV-90, is a family of Swedish tracked combat vehicles designed by Swedish Defense Material Administration, Haglunds, and Bofors during the mid-1980s to early 1990s, entering service in Sweden in the mid-1990s. The CV-90 platform design has continuously evolved in steps from Mark Zero to Mark IV with advances in technology and in response to changing battlefield requirements. The Swedish version of the main infantry fighting vehicle is fitted with a turret from Bofors that is equipped with a 40mm Bofors autocannon. Export versions are fitted with the Haglund's E-Series turrets and either with a 30mm or 35mm Bushmaster autocannon. Developed specifically for Nordic or subarctic climate, the vehicle has a very good mobility in snow and wetlands while carrying and supporting 8, later version 6, fully equipped dismount soldiers. Other variants include forward observation, command and control, anti-aircraft, armor recovery vehicle, electronic warfare, and so forth. The CV-90 and the Haglund's E-Series turrets have been under continuous development with more than 4 million hours invested and are still produced with modern protection, armament, and network-enabled solutions. Currently, 1,280 vehicles in 15 variants are in service with 7 user nations, 4 of which are NATO members, under Bay Systems Haglund's AB. So yeah, the CV-90, a very uh, awesome-looking uh, uh, IFE, just a uh, super sick looking. Uh, I love the turret for it. I love just the overall design for it, and just overall really nice looking Swedish vehicle. The version we have in front of us here is the CV ninety forty C. So it's a bit of a um, different variant, or more specific kind of an IFE type of uh, type of vehicle, equipped of course with the forty millimeter Bofors auto cannon and uh, secondary machine guns and stuff like that. So overall, pretty nice design for the vehicle, I think, overall, and will be an awesome addition to any of your Swedish modern forces, and also uh, with some of the other operators and stuff like that for this vehicle. 
Um, but yeah, pretty nice vehicle overall. Happy to get another modern Swedish vehicle out into our lineup, and uh, hopefully you guys all do enjoy it. Anyways, let's go ahead and kind of dive in here to take a look at the vehicle to see exactly where we'll be going ahead and uh, building it exactly. So to start off with, we have obviously the chassis for a pretty simple, standard kind of IFE chassis. Uh, very sloped, nice uh, profile and all that stuff to it. As we approach up here to the turret, we do have um, the turret, which is offset slightly. So you can see here we have the turret offset to the side. Uh, we have the main 40mm Bofors um, gun, a mounted machine gun up on top here, different uh, optic boxes and stuff like that for the um, crew as well as the commander's hatch. Uh, smoke grenade dispensers here on the sides and that's really about it for the turret. On the back here, pretty uh, simple, just some uh, hatches and stuff like that to open up to allow access to the uh, top here and then you have the back door here which is a uh, part of the crew compartment that would be able to uh, open to actually allow troops to disembark from the vehicle. So overall, pretty nice looking design for it. I think going to make an awesome addition to any of your worlds, um, especially if you're looking for some kind of modern um, combat vehicles for Sweden. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our first layer here. We're going ahead and starting off with layer one. For layer one to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an Arabic slab like so, followed by an Arabic top slab, cut off that slab like that. After that, we're going to then place down a black shulker box on its side like this to the side, followed by an item frame and then a green stained glass paint in the item frame like so. If you're on Java also, we can place a dark oak button on the side of the shulker box as well. But again, that's only a feature that you can do on Java, put in an item frame and a uh, block or like a button or like a sign or anything like that in the same block space so if that's the case if you're on bedrock just place down the item frame if you're on java place the item frame and the button if you're able to anyways after this we're going to then place down two polished black stone stairs back to back like so and we're going to go then follow this up and place down a narrow row of or just a row of three of black shulker boxes on their sides like so same things item frames on the side here green stained glass paints in the item frames and again if you're on java dark oak buttons on the side of those blocks we're going to go then place down two polished black stone stairs back to back again, followed by another black shulker box on its side like so. And again, same thing, item frame, green stained glass, and a dark oak button like that. After that's done, we're going to go and then place down an Arabic slab, followed by an Arabic top slab going back from it. Going to the front of the vehicle here, we're going to go ahead and grab our dark oak slabs, and we're going to go ahead and go to this Arabic slab, and we're going to place down a row of three, or sorry, row of four over. And I did break this item frame, so let me go ahead and... Uh, fix this real quick. Um, but we're going to go ahead and place that row across like so. And then we're going to place down zombie heads coming off the two slabs to the sides there. After that, going ahead and going to the rear. Uh, so the back here, we're going to go, and go to this Nurbrick slab as well. This time, though, we're going to place down three spruce wood top slabs over. And then a dark oak wood top slab like so. And again, zombie heads here on the two uh, slabs on the for, the for the sides. After that's done, we can go ahead and then fill in the base here for the vehicle by just going ahead and taking our dark oak with top slabs and just filling this whole space in in between those two rows of four of slabs. So just like this, to fully close this area off. After that, we're going to go ahead and pick the same design we did over here for the tracks and just go ahead and replicate it over here to this side. Now this is something I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit faster as I already covered the other side in good detail, but if you need to, you can very simply just go ahead and uh, pause the video, slow the video down, um, or uh, just build it off going off the other side uh, either way will work it's pretty straightforward stuff and nothing really too complicated so just like that there for our tracks and anyways once we have that all done uh, we're gonna go ahead and also place our buttons here again if we are uh, able to and then at this point I'm gonna go ahead and grab some materials we need to go ahead and make those banners there on the sides for those wheels um, so I'm gonna grab those materials real quick and I'll see you guys here shortly alright guys so to go ahead and make these banners they're really simple to make we're just gonna need a loom two green banners and four black dye we're gonna go ahead and go into our loom and we're gonna place down our first green banners in and our black dye for each of these banners we're going to split it in half for the one banner with the black on the left side and then the other banner of the black on the right side so you create these two banners like so split in half each one of these banners is going to go ahead and go back into our loom and we're going to select the line that goes right across, right through the center there. So just like that and same thing right here, that horizontal off the line like so. After we have that done, we're going to very simply take these banners and we're going to place them down on these two polished black stone stairs with the green facing toward each other. And that's going to be the same thing here for each one of these um, two sets of two stairs like that. So pretty simple stuff, nothing too crazy, and that right there will basically conclude what we have for layer 1. Looking at it from the top down view, this is what we should have with the layer complete. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number 2. 
Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 2. For layer 2 to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down a narrow brick stair on top of those two narrow brick top slabs, and then we want to place down a row of three of green terracotta across, or sorry, row of four of green terracotta across between those stairs. After that, we're going to place down a row of three of dark oak with top slabs across. Going ahead and going back here, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of green terracotta across the back here, followed by a green shulker box on both ends. Coming off that green shulker box, we're going to place down an iron frame, followed by a green terracotta block in the iron frame, and a dark oak wood button also on the side of that shulker box if you are on java and same thing over here as well like so after we get this done we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow row of four green terracotta across this time with a dark oak wood up down stair to both sides like so we're going to go ahead and place down an item frame on the side here of that stair and in that item frame we want to go ahead and place down a orange bed rotated so that the pillow is facing toward the front of the vehicle and same thing over here as well we then also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood sign and we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of this stair just like this. After that, we're going to take our green terracotta. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of six across, followed by a second row of six, and then a third row. On the ends of those three rows, we want to go ahead and place down one, two, three dark oak wood buttons and one, two, three dark oak wood buttons. Also, one thing on the front here, we're going to go ahead and swap out these middle two green terracotta blocks here after this row four top slabs for two mossy cobblestone balls there in the center. So, just going to make that simple little change there. Um, after that, we're going to take our green terracotta, we're going to place down a narrow row of six, going all the way across. On the ends of this row of six, we're going to have an iron frame again, a orange bed, rotated so the pillow is facing toward the front, and a dark oak wood sign over the side of the iron frame if you're able to do that. And same thing over here to the right side. We're going to go then place down again six rows, or sorry, three rows of six of green terracotta. Going all the way across, like so. And we're going to then place down three dark oak wood buttons on the sides here. After that, we're going to then do a row of four of green terracotta across the center here. A dark oak wood up down the stair to both sides. Just like we did we been did before. Item frame, orange bed in the item frame with the pillow facing toward the front. A dark oak wood sign on the side of the uh, stair. And same thing right here. Just like so. After that, we're going to take our green terracotta. We're going to do another row of four across the center, like so. And then we're going to place down a green shulker box. On uh, both ends, item frame, green terracotta block in the item frame, and a dark oak button on the side of the shulker box. And same thing over here as well. Just like that. After that, we want to go then place down an air brick stair on top of those narrow brick top slabs there. And then coming off the narrow brick stairs on the back, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door like so. Once we get to this point, we're going to grab spruce wood stairs. And we want to go and place down a row of three of spruce wood up down stairs across the back here. And after we have that done, we're going to then place down a mossy cobblestone wall in this section here, followed by a dark oak wood stair that extends from the mossy cobblestone wall. And then we're just going to place down dark oak wood signs on these two sides here of the stair. So the inner side right here, and side that faces out toward the back there. After that's all complete though, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number two. Looking at it from above, this is what we should have so far. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number three. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 3. For layer 3 to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go and place down a row of 3 of dark oak with trapdoors across like so. And then we're going to place down a row of, sorry, a row of 4 dark oak with trapdoors and then a row of 4 of daylight detectors. Again, make sure you close those trapdoors if they do decide to open on you. After this, we're going to place down a row of four, or row 6 of dark oak with slabs across, followed by an item frame on both ends. And then in those item frames, we're going to go ahead and place down a white bed, which we're going to rotate on its side like so. And same thing over here as well followed by a dark oak wood sign on the sides of the slabs as well to both sides like that for those lights. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down a dark oak wood fence gate come off the sides of these slabs and open up toward the slabs like so. And then taking our dark oak wood stairs, we're going to place down a row of six going all the way across here like so. After that, we're going to place down a row of six of green terracotta followed by a second row, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine rows of green terracotta going all the way across here. And once we get to this point here, uh, we want to go ahead and then uh, place down a green shulker box on top of these two stairs, just like that. We're going to go then take our green terracotta, and we're going to place down one and two blocks here to the left side. We're going to go then place down two spruce wood stairs here, upside down, and we're going to go then place down a stripped spruce wood block which will go in this space like so at this point here we're going to, go and to replace the two blocks behind those stairs with black concrete 
So just like that, two black concrete blocks. And we can also take some spruce wood signs and to kind of close that viewport down to make it look a little bit more slimmer. We're gonna place down some uh, spruce wood signs just like that on the side there. Now with that all complete there, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab a dark oak with trap door. We're gonna place it down coming off this green terracotta block here toward the back. And we also want to go ahead and go ahead and line our shulker boxes and our green terracotta blocks all the way along the side here. And we're gonna place down the dark oak with trap doors and make sure we close them or open them, however you want to look at it, so that they are flat against. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, uh, so that they are flat across the green terracotta blocks. And we're just going to make sure they're all closed. And we want to go and then place down a ladder here on this green shulker box on the very back. And once we have that all done there, that is going to complete what we have for layer number three. And looking at from above here, this is what we should have from the top down view. With that though, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. Alright guys, go ahead and move into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and go to the top of these fence gates. We're going to place down a zombie head here at a slight angle to both sides here for uh, basically our little side mirrors. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a zombie head here, followed by a zombie head at a slight angle to both sides of it. So just like that for basically the driver's optics there. And then we're going to place down a spruce wood slab directly behind it. To the left side here, we're going to place down a daylight detector. Over here to the other side, we're going to place down four daylight detectors to the side. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark liquid stair, which is going to go in, or sorry, actually a green terracotta block. Uh, no, actually, sorry, a dark liquid stair, I was right. Going back from this spruce wood slab, followed by a green terracotta block over, and then our dark liquid slab. We then want to go ahead and place down two daylight detectors to the right side there, and then one to the left side. After we have that done, we're going to place down two rows of three of green terracotta going back from the green terracotta block and stairs, and then to the sides here, we're going to place down two dark liquid stairs to both sides like that, and over here on the right side, two daylight detectors going back from those and actually those two stairs there are actually going to be two green terracotta blocks so my apologies so two green terracotta blocks after uh, we have that done we're going to then place down a dark liquid uh, sign that's going to be coming off the side of this stair here and we then want to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall going back from the stair and we're going to then take our green terracotta place down one two three over and we're going to then place down a dark liquid stair like this after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of mossy cobblestone walls across the side here. On the side of this mossy cobblestone wall here, we're going to place a dark oak with sign, followed by a dark oak with slab here in the corner. And then over here to the right side, we're going to place down a dark oak with slab coming off the stair, and then two coming off those walls like that out to the sides. We then want to go ahead and grab our spruce wood slabs. We're going to place down uh, two rows of four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four down the center. One, two, three, four. To the left side, we're going to place down two daylight detectors, or two uh, dark oak wood slabs, and then to the other side, we want to grab some polished blackstone slabs, and we're going to place down a row of two of polished blackstone slabs, so one, two over here on the right side. After that's done, we want to go and then take our dark oak wood slabs again, we're going to place down a row of six, going all the way across the, the back here, so just like that. We're going to go and place down an item frame on these two slabs here to both sides, and we want to go and then place down a red bed in those item frames, and we're going to rotate it so that the pillow is facing toward the sides of the vehicle. So just like that, and a dark oak sign over the side of that as well if you are able to. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and also place down a zombie head, which is going to be on top of the, or come off this slab here, and just so we don't have to worry about it later, we can go ahead and knock out the rest of this little thing right here, which is going to be a dark oak fence post on top of it, and then a zombie head on top like so. And anyways, once we have that all done there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number four for the build. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number five. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak stair face in this direction on top of that green terracotta block. We're going to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall going forward, followed by two polished black stone slabs like so. Dark oak with signs on both sides of this first slab like so. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves uh, end rods. We're going to place down a row of one, two, and three end rods, followed by a uh, wither skeleton skull here on the very end here, that very tip. After that's all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a uh, dark oak wood stair that's going to be over here to the left side. So left side of the stair like so, and then a green terracotta block over here to the right side. At this point here, coming off this stair, we're going to place down a corner stair. And then also coming off the stair as well toward the front, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak slab. So dark oak slab like so. And then in this corner space here, we're just going to place down a zombie head coming off that corner stair. To the opposite side, we're going to place down a dark oak slab here, come off the green terracotta one. And we want to go and then place down a daylight detector here right next to it. 
After that is done there, we're going to go ahead and then uh, place down a dark liquid stair here again in the center. So coming off this one back over here to the left side, two green terracotta blocks over to the right side. It's going to be a green terracotta block here and then a dark liquid slab and then a dark Oak, or a daylight detector. Our next row here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of a green terracotta block in the center, then two over here to the left side, and then one block over here to the right side, followed by a dark oak slab and a daylight detector, like so. After that, uh, on the corner here, or on the back, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak stair that's going to be facing this direction, like so, and we're going to place down a dark oak sign on the side of it as well. We then want to place down a green terracotta block to both sides of the stair, and we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, monster cobblestone wall on the green terracotta blocks on the sides there. At the very back here, we're going to place down a uh, monster cobblestone wall to both sides again. And actually, we're going to delete that sign. And instead, we're going to place down a zombie head here on this monster cobblestone wall. And with uh, that all complete there, that is going to wrap up the back section there. And with that, that's going to pretty much wrap up this layer. Just trying to make sure there isn't anything I am forgetting and everything does appear to be good to go. So with that, that's going to complete layer number five. And from this, we're going to be going ahead and now moving into uh, our final layers here, which would be layers about six through nine to go ahead and complete all the top detailing. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our final layers, we have layers six through nine. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, uh, we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and grabbing ourselves a green shulker box and place down a shulker box on top of this green terracotta block. We're going to go then grab an item frame and we're going to have an item frame that's going to be coming off of this block, like this toward the front here. And we're going to go and then place down a black stained glass pane in that item frame like so. To the side of this, we're going to then place down a spruce wood stair here on top of this green terracotta block and there's spruce wood stair directly behind it. Coming off the front here of the spruce wood stair, we're going to place down an item frame. And then in that item frame, we're going to go and place down a black bed, rotate on its side, and then a dark oak sign over it like that for a viewport there. We're going to go then place down a zombie head on top of this green terracotta block at a very slight angle like so, face down to the side. We then want to grab polished blackstone slabs and also wither skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a polished blackstone slab coming off the side here of the shulker box with a wither skeleton skull coming off it toward the front. And then back here next to this spruce wood stair, we're going to place down a polished blackstone slab as well with a um, wither skeleton skull coming off the side there for smoke grenade dispensers. We're going to go then place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of these two fence gates or on top of those two musty cobblestone walls. And we're just going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three iron bars going up so one two and three iron bars going up like that for the radio antennas after we have that done we're going to then place down a spruce wood slab over here on the right side back from the shulker box and then a dark oak wood button on top of that green terracotta block there we then want to place down a mossy couple stone wall in the middle block there and then coming off of that we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate and we're going to open it up toward the wall like so and then on the top here for the machine gun we're going to need a end rod a uh, dark oak or a dark oak fence gate. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and also need a anvil, dark oak slam, uh, zombie head, and a dark oak wood. We have dark oak slabs already, and dark oak signs, and a redstone repeater for right now. Uh, to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna place down a an anvil on top of this fence gate. So just like that. And then we want to go and then grab ourselves a polished blackstone stair. We're gonna place down a polished blackstone upstairs stair coming off it facing toward the front. Followed by a dark oak fence gate and then a end rod. After that, we're going to place down a dark oak top slab on the side of this uh, stair. And then we're going to take our dark oak signs and wrap them around the uh, two sides like that of the slab. And then a zombie head here facing toward the rear. On the other side here of the stair, we're going to place down an item frame. Followed by a black bed in the item frame. So like that, uh, rotates the pillows facing forward, and then a dark oak sign there on the side of the item frame, or on the side of the top slab if you are on Java. On the very top here of this, we're going to place down a redstone repeater with a notch spread apart, and then also a powered rail here on top of that dark oak top slab. And after that's all complete there, that's going to pretty much wrap up my tutorial here uh, for this vehicle. Actually, one thing we could also do here is we can actually change the barrel for the machine gun, so it's actually a chain. So we can actually go ahead and modify that to uh, fit a little bit better. Um, with uh, our newer builds. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude the tutorial here for the CV90 uh, 
40C. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do abuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This would be anything from the side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does bring any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to use the projects you guys are working on over on the build. Have fun with it and all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett204, and I'll see you guys next time.